Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Surviving Survival Mode. In this installment, I'll be talking about how to manage your hunger. Like thirst, hunger is an ever-present concern in survival mode. However, you do not get hungry as often and it's easier to replenish food supplies than water supplies, in my opinion. Hunger modifies the Charisma, Endurance, and Luck stats and will also reduce your hit points. You'll get hungry approximately every six in-game hours. Also, some chems can make you hungry considerably more often. The most common one being Rataway, which also makes you tired. Taking four or five Rataways can severely debilitate you. I'll talk more about this in my episode about managing your health and fitness. There are five levels of hunger, each with their own modifiers. The first one is Peckish which gives you a debuff of minus one intelligence. At this stage, it will usually take two food items to satisfy your hunger. If you don't eat after six or more in-game hours, you will become hungry, which gives you minus one charisma and minus two intelligence. The next stage is famished, which gives you minus three charisma, minus four endurance, and minus one luck. Several hours after that, you will become ravenous, and will suffer minus five charisma, minus eight endurance, and minus two luck. If you still haven't eaten several hours after that, you will be starving and will suffer with minus five charisma, minus 10 endurance, and minus three luck, as well as sustaining periodic damage. You can also become extremely fatigued and will no longer be able to run. If you continue on this way and do nothing to stop your deteriorating health, you will eventually die. As horrible as all that sounds, I still feel like it's easier to manage your hunger than your thirst. The main reason being is that you don't get hungry as often as you get thirsty. But food is also very easy to get. You don't have to find bottles first in order to collect it, and though you do have to cook meat before you can eat it, you can eat prepackaged foods with some minor risk of illness. However, the risk is very small. I advanced to level 13 eating only prepackaged foods without ever getting sick. Of course, you could get sick the very first time you eat some, but that's where the risk comes in. I got sick way more often drinking dirty water. You are more likely to get sick eating raw meat though, so be sure to cook it first. And that may bring up the question, what is the best food to eat in survival mode? Well, when it comes to nutritional value, all foods are actually created equal. A pack of bubble gum will satisfy just as much hunger as a Brahmin steak, so it really doesn't matter what you eat in that regard. Where you're going to see a difference is in carry weight, extra buffs, and radiation, or lack thereof. So I'm going to talk about each of those, since they're all important. On regular difficulty, you eat food only for the buffs they can give you, such as extra carrying capacity, damage resistance, or health regeneration. In survival mode, you will still get these buffs from food, however, they will only apply if you are not hungry. So you first have to eat to satisfy your hunger, and once that's accomplished, the other buffs will kick in. So if you're starving and want to eat to restore your health really quick, you may be in trouble, especially if you have very little food on you and you have to eat everything in your inventory before healing can begin. This is another good reason why you should always stay as satiated as you can. Next, we'll talk about radiation in food. Food that you make at a cooking station is the only kind that does not contain some amount of radiation, but don't discount the other kinds because they just might be all that's between you and a severe case of starvation. The radiation damage you get from eating packaged or raw foods is pretty small. The character I mentioned before, who reached level 13 eating only prepackaged foods, never had any trouble with it. He got more radiation damage from fighting a pack of ghouls. The top five best packaged foods are Dandy Boy Apples, Iguana Bits, Fancy Lad's Snack Cakes, Gumdrops, and Bubblegum. These foods weigh the least and have the least amount of radiation. The top five worst packaged foods are pork and beans, sugar bombs, Instamash, potato crisps, and Salisbury steak. These are the heaviest and have the most radiation. In survival mode, managing your carry weight will be one of your top priorities, especially in the early game. So taking three dozen Brahmin steaks with you on a trip may not be feasible, especially if you're going through a large dungeon where you're going to want to collect a lot of loot. 
so carrying the lightest foods possible is very important. The top five lightest cooked foods are Meyerlerk egg omelet, Meyerlerk cake, iguana on a stick, squirrel on a stick, and crispy squirrel bits, all of which weigh only 0.1. In my opinion, these are the top five best foods in the entire game if you're not looking for extra perks. The only drawback to squirrel and iguana is the fact that you can't hunt the meat yourself and you have to find it or buy it. But every general goods merchant will sell it and you can often find them on dead raiders or in raider camps, so they're not actually that hard to get. You can also make your own at a cooking station using squirrel bits and iguana bits, which you can find or buy from vendors. Another food alternative is raw food items. These include edible plants and uncooked meat. I don't advise eating raw meat, however, since you have a pretty high chance of getting an illness from doing so. Raw vegetables, however, such as corn or potatoes, are lightweight and contain very little amounts of radiation, and they are very easy to find. The top five best raw foods are corn, wild mute fruit, wild razor grain, mute fruit, and razor grain. These contain the least amounts of radiation and are the lightest to carry. The top five worst raw foods are carrot, wild corn, melon, gourd, and tato. But wait, you might be saying, I heard that melons are good because they quench your thirst. This is true, they do quench your thirst, if you eat enough of them. But you have to consume more melons to quench your thirst than you do purified water, and they are twice as heavy. And you don't always need to eat at the same time as when you need to drink, since you have to drink more often. I think that storing a few melons at your various settlements to eat while you're there is a good idea, but don't use them as traveling food, they'll just weigh you down. Speaking of traveling, here is what my survival character generally takes with him on a trip of any length, in regards to food and water, and this has worked out very well for me so far. Four squirrel on a stick, iguana on a stick, or crispy squirrel bits, two mute fruit, two corn, and six to ten purified water. This is a very lightweight pack to carry, and I have yet to use it all up before reaching a destination where I can replenish my supplies. Be sure to store any excess food and water you collect at various settlement locations so you can go there later to restock when you're running low. If you do find yourself without food on the backside of the Commonwealth, scrounge around for wild plants. Wild corn, mute fruit, and razor grain grow all over, and they can be a lifesaver in desperate times. So that's all for this episode everyone. I'm not going to talk about the various buffs you can get from different foods, since I don't feel that's related to survival mode, but if you would like to know information about that topic, check out my Daring Chef videos. I'll leave links in the descriptions for those. They're good for a chuckle if nothing else. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps out my channel. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already because I've got more of these survival mode guides coming out soon. Also, check out my channel for more Fallout 4 tips and tricks videos, my Fallout 4 Let's Play, and my Uncharted 4 Let's Play. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and like me on Facebook for game news and latest channel updates. Until next time, everyone, remember to play safe, play nice, and have fun. See ya.